It's been a while, I think four years. I don't know what to call it now. It was uh, kind of the chili report. Then chili got fired. And then I kind of lost interest. A lot's changed in my life, you know, a lot of expansion of my family. And, you know, so we kind of outgrew our old house, but we built us a bigger one, you know, all that good stuff. Um, main reason I'm here after all this time away is um, nothing has changed. I mean, this, this is four years ago what I said. Rick Spielman, uh, the Vikings, he, he makes all the personnel decisions. Uh, he should be fired. Four years ago, Rick Spielman needs to be fired. He went from Christian Ponder to Webster to Glass Joe now. Now, I mean, it's, it's pretty pathetic. At some point, we need a GM who is interested in a franchise quarterback. I mean, we did finally get rid of you know, the child-beating procreator, uh, which is good. And really, I mean, it's, it's good we got rid of him because he's a scumbag, but it's also good because he sucked. I mean, even at his best, he was never going to help you win because he was going to always fumble at a critical moment or he was going to miss a block or he was going to be off the field because he didn't know how to pass block and he couldn't catch a pass out of the backfield. Or he was going to get a, you know, he'll get 10 5-yard losses in a row and then he'll get a 75-yard touchdown. Ooh, isn't that valuable? No. No. We need a quarterback. We need an offensive line. Neither of which we have. We could use a really good first-round wide receiver. But instead we have Laquan Treadwell. One reception his rookie year. And I think that just came when the defense felt sorry for him. And you want to know why the Vikings struggle so much. Why they always find a way to lose those big games. Let's take Jarek McKinnon returning kicks as an example. Okay. This year, in the first two weeks, the first two games, there have been three instances where he takes a kick deep in the end zone and tries to run it out and ends up getting... Nowhere near the 25, which is where he would have been if he had taken a knee. So he's given up about 30 yards total of field position on those kicks. If he was playing for, say, Bill Belichick, if he did that once, he'd probably never return another kick again. That is the issue with, with Vikings players. They don't think. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. It's sort of like their GM doesn't think. It's sort of like their owner is a scumbag, weasel, lying, thieving, racketeering piece of garbage. You know, primary issue with the Vikings at this moment is that so many of them are so overrated. A lot of that overrating is from the fans. Certain factions of fans just are such homers. They think everybody on the team is great. But there's also certain Vikings who have somehow developed these reputations as great people or great locker room guys or just fantastic players and they have never done anything. So I'd like to go through a list of my 10 most overrated Vikings. Uh, number 10, this is not a specific player, it's just the Vikings defense. Um, I'll get into individual Vikings defenders later on, but the Vikings defense is like, it's pretty good, but they never make game-changing plays. They never really put tons of pressure on the opposing offense. It just seems like they're just good enough, usually, to keep the other team from scoring too many points. But if you need them to make that big play, that big stop, they can't do it. From the 33, Stafford steps up, no timeouts remaining. It's just very overrated. Like when you watch, when you watch great, you think of great defenses, like uh, Ray Lewis led um, murder, I mean Ravens, the Buccaneers defense of the 90s, I guess, uh, Steel Curtain, Purple People Eaters, whatever. They are very attacking. They put pressure on you. They make the other offense very nervous. 
when I watch the Vikings defense, it's like, yeah, once every 10 plays, they'll put pressure on the quarterback. And that's about it. It's almost like they just count on the other offense to screw up. Number nine most overrated Viking, uh, <laughs> Laquan Treadwell. I mean, it's, I think his mom still thinks he's good. She's probably the only person. So just the fact that one person thinks he's good, he's way, way, way overrated. Uh, number eight most overrated Viking, Teddy Bridgewater. Barring the fact that he's got like Estelle Getty's knees. Estelle Getty. I wanted it to be a surprise. It is. Stop. I'm on mobile, shoot. Uh, and I think, I don't even know, I think she's dead, which, appropriate. I mean, his knees are, he's got the knees of a dead woman. Even even if he had normal knees, uh, the guy can't throw a football. This, this is his throwing motion. Okay, he he looks kind of like Greg Luganis trying to wave down a waiter at some bar. Um, by Bridgewater. Very non-traditional. Watch the tracer here. You know, watch the tracer here. You know, watch the tracer here. No. We'll do it live. That's that's. You just, this doesn't work, okay? Aaron Rodgers has this Dan Marino. Tom Brady cheats the, the Seattle playoff game. He would have led him to a total of 12 points. Now, of course, it was only nine points because Blair Walsh uh, missed the field goal and went and cried in front of a bunch of eight-year-olds. Everybody thought that was great because it's Minnesota. We love, we just love our people. But anyway, number seven most overrated Viking, Mitch Leidner. He was a Viking for like a week, and there was never any chance he would make the team. But just the fact that he ever, even in preseason, even as a guy they were going to cut, ever was on a Vikings roster, an NFL roster ever, he's overrated. Number six, Anthony Barr. Just a guy who's always hurt. Um, has so much natural ability. And, you know, kind of never does anything. Occasionally he'll make like a, a play, but usually he just looks like he's not trying. Uh, number five, Everson Griffin. Again, a guy who, you know, I think probably you look at his stats at the end of the year, it's like, oh, he's got him. Got like 10 ish sacks, so he must be a real good pass rusher. Well, he's really good at rushing the passer. Uh, let's say, let's say it's third and 15 for the uh, the opposing team, and you got him backed up, and it looks like it's going to be a game changing play. He's real good at jumping off sides, setting up a third and 10, and then and then getting no pressure on that third and 10, and allowing them to pick up the first down, and then. That drive leads to a touchdown, and the game changes, and everything goes to hell. That's Everson Griffin. He's another one of those Viking defenders who makes makes plays when they don't matter. Doesn't make them when they matter. Number four most overrated Viking, Harrison Smith. Another guy just has this reputation as being so good, but doesn't do anything. And it's complete the golden tape. Who's that? It's complete the golden tape. Who's that? It's complete the golden tape. Off the phone, it's his talent. Doesn't make big plays. Number three, Xavier Rhodes. This guy really ticks me off because people talk about him like he's Deion Sanders or, you know, Daryl Green. Like he is a, an absolute shutdown corner. Um,. Here's the thing. Never turns to look at the ball. So it's very easy to just throw a back shoulder pass and have him either interfere or have it be completed. So he, because he never turns to look for the ball, he's never a threat to make an interception, which is one of the primary things you want in a great cornerback. The ability to make that game-changing play. He's never going to do it. He is a penalty machine, and he will get them at the worst possible time. Stafford throws, and it's... Stafford throws and it's come. Stafford throws and it's come. Great cornerbacks don't get penalties all the time. And also, he holds on every play. So if they wanted to, they could call holding on him on every play. 
They don't, which allows him to prevent receptions on a lot of plays and allows him to appear to hold receivers to low yards, but that doesn't include the fact that he's cheating the whole time and the fact that he gets tons of big penalties, which aren't included in his defensive quarterback rating or whatever that's called. Uh, number two. No, oh, this guy I just hate. Kyle Rudolph. Another one of these guys who certain Vikings fans and the Vikings media talk about him like he's an all-pro. All he is is tall. He's not fast. He's, in fact, quite slow. He's not tough. He'll never break a tackle. And he'll never try to pick up a first down by running somebody over. He will run out of bounds short of the first down marker every time. And he can't catch. He will drop every pass that's remotely challenging, and even some that aren't. But, oh, he's, he's an all-pro, and he thinks he's great. Just can't stand him. Number one. Number one. Most overrated Viking, and you know, I, I would also say the Viking, I just, I just can't. This guy makes me sick. Brian Robison. Okay, I've never liked this guy. Going back, to, like, almost 10 years, never liked this guy. He's one of these locker room guys. He's a great in the locker room. He's a team leader. He is the only person, only person I have ever seen jump off sides on a fourth and short. He's the only one. You know they're not going to snap the ball. He is the only person. That's good leadership there. And what happened? Did that, did that drive end up leading to a touchdown? Yes. Good leadership, Brian. I like your sack celebration, whole reeling in the fish. That's that's really manly, number one. And uh, it's really good to have a sack celebration when you're not even a guy who gets many sacks. That's, that's awesome. Good for you, Brian. I want a good locker room guy like Brian Robison. That's, that's leadership, is a guy who does this, and a guy who jumps off side on fourth and one. That is leadership. Leadership is not a guy who quietly goes out and sets an example of how to play the game the right way. That is not leadership, no. That is not what we need. We don't need guys like that. Leadership is the guy who does this when he gets a sack, and a guy who jumps off side on fourth and one. That's, that's leadership. You need a guy who, who's good in the locker room. That's what you need. A guy who's thinking about doing this before he's thinking about winning. That sums up the Vikings, the problem with the Vikings. They think they're better than they are, and they don't think about doing the things they need to do to win. Now little Sammy Bradford, Glass Joe, his knee is bad again. It's going to be another lost season. And it'll always be a lost season as long as Rick Spielman is running the show. So just don't let it get you two down. Don't let it get you two down. Nothing changes. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Four years ago, it was the same story. Four years from now, it's going to be the same story. And actually, I need to, to dedicate this video, which is probably my worst video ever, but kind of losing interest in this whole Vikings business. But I want to dedicate this video to um, Jesse and Madison. Um, uh, so Jeffrey Peterka? 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 got in touch with me and said this uh, fan of the former Chili Report, Jesse, was getting married. This was like almost a year ago and I said I'd make him a video and I never did. 
And so he's probably he's, you know, plotting my death. Hopefully, hopefully he'll see this and spare my life. Uh, so Jesse and Madison, congratulations on your wedding. I guess I should say congratulations, Madison. Jesse, I'm sorry for you. Um, I hope you're surviving. Um, I wish I could have talked some sense into you before you, you know, kind of went through with it, but um, best wishes to both of you. I hope your life together goes better than the Vikings season.